This is a model of a dog's hip, the joint where the femur meets the pelvis. In this model, our dog would be standing facing that way, with the tail right here. In a normal hip, the top of the femur is this perfect round ball, and the pelvis has a nice deep socket. This does a couple of things. First, the motion is a smooth pivoting in any direction. Second, because the socket covers the top of the ball, the joint is mechanically strong. The joint can support weight even without using any muscle. You can see I can pick up the whole model from the femur. Hip dysplasia is a genetic condition in which the hip is too loose and the socket is too shallow. On our model, we can flip a switch to make the socket shallower, pushing the femur out slightly to simulate hip dysplasia. Even though the bones look relatively normal, this geometry is a big problem. With a loose, shallow shape, the hip has too much of this wandering movement. The nearby tissues stretch and rub, and that hurts. Additionally, the joint is mechanically weak. When the dog goes to bear weight, it no longer supports them and is always threatening to dislocate. As a result, the nearby muscles have to work overtime to keep the hip in place. I mean, you literally have to hold yourself together. Over time, the body forms scar tissue and new bone around the hip, and that's the body's attempt to increase stability, and is essentially what we call arthritis. In time, you can end up with a hip that looks like this. You can see all of this ugly new bone. The cartilage has worn away, and this bone-on-bone -bone rubbing is a major contributor to arthritic pain. Again, there's no good ball or socket. The femur has developed a mushroomed shape. Despite the body's efforts, the joint is still mechanically weak and painful. Both young dogs with very loose hips and middle-aged dogs who have progressed to develop arthritis show signs of pain and weakness. They have a hard time going upstairs or jumping up. They struggle to stand up, particularly on slippery floors. As a result of this decreased activity, they tend to put on weight. They can't exercise for very long. These dogs have chronic pain, and they can seem depressed or sad, looking on longingly as their friends run and play. But we can treat a dog with hip dysplasia in a number of different ways. One way is non-surgical treatment. This involves several strategies. First, we want to help the dog lose weight and stay as slim as possible. And this alone is enormously helpful for the hips. The second strategy is to build muscle strength by maintaining a regular, low-impact exercise routine. And finally, we use medications to treat painful inflammation. For a dog with mild or moderate hip dysplasia, this non-surgical treatment is a good solution. For a dog who's more severely affected, it may not do the job, and in that case we can use surgery, either an FHO surgery or a hip replacement surgery. In the FHO surgery, we remove the ball of the ball and socket joint by cutting it off. There's no treatment of the socket and no replacement hip. Instead, the body forms a scar tissue connection between the bones. The point of this surgery is to eliminate the pain that comes from the bone-on-bone -bone rubbing. And for a dog with an arthritic hip, this definitely helps. Mechanically, it's not a great solution. How well a dog can manage with this kind of connection depends on the size and shape of the dog. Smaller dogs manage better than larger ones and heavily muscled breeds tend to do better than lankier dogs.
The other surgical option is a hip replacement. This surgery is very similar to a hip replacement that a person would get. If you look at these two radiographs, only the tail gives away which one is the dog and which is the person. And as in people, hip replacement in dogs is a very, very good surgery. You know, you talk to a person who has had a hip replacement and they often say, oh, I wish I did it 10 years ago. Similarly, dogs that receive a hip replacement have an excellent outcome and they walk with much greater strength and comfort than they ever did on their own hip. It really gives them a new lease on life. We call the procedure a total hip replacement. Total meaning that both the ball and the socket are replaced. The surgery starts off like the FHO by removing the ball. In this case, it gets a replacement. And this is a metal implant that anchors in the femur and has this perfect ball. At the socket, we remove some bone and put in a replacement socket. The two implants fit together, giving you a perfect hip. It's pain-free, as there's no longer an arthritic joint and it's mechanically strong. Finally, this dog can support weight and has a strong frame on which to build muscle strength. These dogs go on to a life that is comfortable, active, and happy. Thanks for watching to learn about the problem and treatments for hip dysplasia in dogs.